back over your life and see the covering power of love. You are beautiful. Manifestations are not as prevalent in our country as it is in other countries because those people have witch doctors and they operate in sorcery. But I want to lift to you uh, that demonic warfare is even more prevalent here than it is in third world countries. I just believe the enemy just got comfortable over here. There used to be a time that when sinners came to church, they didn't sit up front. And it wasn't because we told them they couldn't. It was the consecration in the atmosphere. It was the consecration on the life of the saints that brought a certain level of conviction and reverence. Y'all are hear what I'm saying. Uh, there used to be a time that if you were in sin, you didn't sing in the choir. And nobody had to sit you down. If they called for you, you said, no, 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 I'm not ready yet. But now people have no reverence for the things of God, nor the people of God. People now, they'll tell you, I am who I am, and you can mind your own business. But there used to be a time that we least honored and respected the saints of God. Now people put all their mess and their business on social media and dare you to say anything about it. And if you bring up anything about them, they'll bring up something about somebody else. But the sign that you're not open to correction is when you bring up other people's stuff when you're a little bit confronted with your own. 
At the end of the day, I got to see Jesus for myself. Anybody here will know what I'm talking about. I fear God. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I, I fear God. It ain't about what a bishop see. It's not about what apostle know about. At the end of the day, I fear God. And how many of y'all know the devil is real? I said the devil is real. And if you don't keep records of God on your life, the Bible said in Psalm 1, it tells us, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scoffer, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. See, what happened, some of us walked in it, then we start sitting in it. But I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, don't get comfortable. Don't, it's a dangerous thing to lose your reverence for God. It's a dangerous thing to lose your conviction. And that's why I pray the prayer of David all the time. And say, Lord, cast me not away from your presence. And whatever you do, take not your spirit. You can take my title, but don't take the Holy Ghost. You can take my reserve parking spot, but don't take the Holy Ghost. You can take my position in the church, but don't take the Holy Ghost. Somebody have to lift up your hand and say, Lord, don't take your spirit. There's constant warfare going on in the atmosphere. I admit to you that the spiritual realm is just as real or even more real than the natural realm that we're living in. For everything that we see in the natural realm is temporal. That means it's only a matter of time that it would no longer exist. There are things that are consistently going on in the, in the atmosphere. There's warfare that we are constantly in. But I want to lift to you tonight that your warfare is bigger than you. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them this is bigger than you. As a matter of fact, some of you, your warfare started before you. Some people say what you don't know won't hurt you, but the devil is a liar. What you don't know can kill you. You can be walking around with blood pressure and not know it, and you can end up having a stroke. And so there's some things that we're dealing with that's going beyond us, and it happened before us. And there's some things we're dealing with is connected to something that's coming after us. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you've got to protect your seed. You've got to protect your seed. As we look in the word of God, we see that it's all about the seed. Here in Genesis, the scripture lets us know that it's all about authority and power and trying to destroy the seed. It's in Genesis chapter 1 verse number 1. It says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the punctuation in the end of that sentence is a period. In other words God created the heaven and earth and it was complete. It was finished and anything God made, he made it good. Somebody say it was good. Verse number 2 says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There are many who read Genesis chapter 1 and they consider this is the beginning of all creation in the earth realm. The only issue with that is when you look at verse 2 it talks about water and if you see it chronological the question is when was the water ever created? Now stay with me here. Well verse 1 says in the beginning God created the heaven and earth period. Verse 2 says and the earth is without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Child of God I want to lift to you that something happened between verse 1 and verse 2. I want to lift to you that when God created the earth it was complete and it was good but something happened by verse 2 that the Bible says the earth is without form and void. Somebody help me here. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. My question is what then happened? Look
look at your neighbor, ask your neighbor, what happened? What happened? How is now the earth underwater? Well, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 10, the scientists tell us something hit the earth. Scientists saw something catastrophic. It was like a comet that hit the earth and put it all under the water. But Jesus says in the gospel of Luke chapter 10, he says, behold, I saw Lucifer cast down out of heaven into the earth. The Bible tells us that Satan was cast down out of heaven because in Isaiah, he says, I really saw my throne above the throne of the Most High and I will be like God. And how many of y'all know God won't have it? See, you got to be careful of the Luciferian spirit. The Luciferian spirit says, although I've been given something, it's still not enough. You got to be careful of the Luciferian spirit in the church. If you make them a choir member, they're not satisfied unless they're the choir director. You got to be careful of the Luciferian spirit. If they can't participate unless they're the head of it. You got to be careful of the Luciferian spirit when they can't feel the Holy Ghost unless they got the microphone. You got to be careful of the Luciferian spirit that's not satisfied until they bring you down just to elevate themselves. Oh my God. So the Bible says now and to Lucifer was given rain in the earth and God gave it to him but because of his deceit he was cast down back into the earth and the scripture said God makes him a man out of the dust of the ground Adam his name is Adam and he calls her woman or Eve and the scripture tells us tonight that God gave them dominion God gave them power tell somebody God gave them power but here is Lucifer the serpent crawling upon the surface all he wants is to get the power back he wants dominion back and the Bible says through his own deceit through the serpent spirit he took the authority back from Adam and Eve and the Bible said they are cast out of the garden but there is a prophecy there is a word there is a promise and the prophecy tonight is in Genesis chapter 3 he says I will put enmity between the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head I need you to grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor I'm going to put some stuff under my feet It was because, thank you for praying for me. It was because of the, uh, the absence of righteousness. God says, I'm going to destroy the city. I'm going to destroy the city because the, uh, the people had started wanting everything that God said for them not to have. They, when we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, they didn't want a relationship with them, they wanted to rape them. But that's what was going on on the outside. But look what was going on on the inside. Lot is telling a group of men who are ready to rape men who came in his house. Said, I will give you my daughters. We don't talk about that. What's wrong with that? Well, you tell me, you see these crazed men outside of your house. They want to rape two strangers and you are offering them your daughters. But see, this is what happens when you stay in Sodom too long. This is what happens when you hang around people too long that's in sin. After a while, you begin to compromise your standard. After a while, you end up doing stuff you said you'd never do. And going places you said you'd never go. But I need you to grab somebody here tonight. Tell them whatever you do. then seed would come forth. It becomes guilty of the sin of old man. And the Bible says, 
Tamar had a husband. Oh my God. By the name of uh, Ur. Ur being evil. And uh, y'all like the Bible, Lydia. I can tell you. Come on, we, we dancing. We ain't dancing dumb this time tonight. But you underestimate us. Ur being evil in the sight of God. And God killed him. I want y'all to know the same God that's in the Old Testament, the same God in the New Testament. You keep on doing people dirty. You ever hear what I'm saying? Don't you think you're gonna do people dirty in your last season and they're gonna shout the next season is mine? Some of that stuff you're gonna reap. You went to somebody else's husband and you're gonna call it celebration.
confidence in him lies the fullness of the Godhead body. Praise the mystery of God. God was manifest in the flesh. He was seen of angels. Preaching to the Gentiles. Proceed up into the world. I need you to grab somebody and say, neighbor, he's a curse breaker. Say, neighbor, he's a cycle breaker. You got to protect your seed. Because what you're carrying is going to set your family up for the next generation. I'm not just shouting about my destiny. I'm shouting about my because the next generation of my family won't have to fight the same battles. The next generation of my family won't have to struggle the same way I struggle. Grab your neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I gotta protect my seed. The seed is the word of God. And I heard the song one night. That word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Tell you they will protect the seed. I'm tired of going to church for three hours and lose the seed at the restaurant. After ten minutes, protect your seed. She will say, I'm going out and he pulled out the seed. Thank you. 
it's against the spirit of homosexuality. Why? Come on. Not because you think it's nasty. No, no, no. Because there's a whole lot of stuff that's nasty. I think shooting up uh, needles that's been used by somebody else, I think that's nasty. Come on. Come on. Sleeping with somebody of the opposite sex and stuff with everybody in and on your street, I think that's nasty too. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I think that's all. I think all the sin is nasty. But why is it that the Bible says this sin is an abomination? Because this is the sin that allows stimulation without production. I'm going to say it again. It allows, see, a woman can arouse another woman. And a man can arouse another man. But even after all they arouse, so nothing is ever produced. And we are not just guilty of natural homosexuality. We are guilty of spiritual homosexuality. When we come to church and stimulate each other, and we never produce. Oh, somebody was praying for me. I just need about three more warnings to go. What we end up doing in our church culture, and the reason why we stop growing and advancing, we fellowship with the same people. And people are have a, they will have it out with you if you don't keep the same date every year. We swap in the same services and swap in the same money. Y'all ain't don't y'all shut down on me here. We only we only connect with people. Who act like us, who look like us, who dress like us, who talk like us. You must connect in this season of your life with people that's enough like you that you're compatible, but different enough that you can produce something. Adam called her woman because she's a man but with a woman. And that's why in this hour, you don't just need a flesh connection, you need a God connection. <laughs>